I'm going to do some Charleston modeling for American style Mahjong using National Mahjong League rules. If you have a set at home, give it a try yourself. It's a great way to build your confidence with your decision making. If you're new to Mahjong, or if you already know how to play and just want to build your skills, consider subscribing to my channel. That way you won't miss anything. We'll just say we're the dealer for these exercises. So I'm going to get 14 random tiles. And now I'll create a mock Charleston. This is just to simulate the incoming passes from other players. It's not meant to be exactly like what it would be in a real game. It's just for practice. So there's our Charleston passes. Let's see what we can do with these tiles. I believe that building around multiples is the strongest strategy. We do have multiples with uh, the white dragons and a seven bam, but we do happen to have the other sevens as well. So I think like numbers is gonna be the way to go with these tiles building around the multiples, and then gather the tiles that you have left over to support those multiples. As an option, I think I would hold the big odds because there is some opportunity here for big odds, and then we would use these as joker bait. And we even have tiles we can pass. Let's start by passing these three. So we picked up an eight, a two, and a three. I think that we could probably pass one of each suit. One, eight, three, two, eight, three. Let's do that so we're not stuck with like numbers in the next pass. Okay, we picked up a nine. We do have an eight. I mean, there is some consecutive run potential, but I think we're stronger with big odds and like numbers. And we still have tiles we can pass here. Let's do the six. Yeah, let's put an odd in there instead. That's a little risky because they're all year tiles. There's a nine bam. Now we have multiples here. So let's pass one of each suit here. Let's see. Oh, no, no, we want to keep that seven for potential like numbers. Let's pass these three. There's a seven. And now we have two tiles to pass. And we're on an obligatory pass. We're going across. I think that we could probably focus on big odds. So if we played maybe five, seven, seven, nine, I think that would be that would be the let's see second hand down with big odds five seven nine or we could still play like numbers with sevens let's go ahead and give up that nine dot there's a red so th that's going to help with like numbers and now we're down to one tile to pass we're on our last right at this point I think we should go ahead and play like numbers and then we can break up the nines there. Definitely I don't want to pass the flower, but we have like numbers pretty well set up here. The like numbers with dragons, third from the bottom. And we could even still maybe play sevens. I think I would go ahead and pass these three, break up the nine. If we get jokers, Later in the game, we could even maybe play a quint with all those sevens. So here we have tiles we can pass. That's not a bad pass for optional cross. Okay, we have discards. So I'd say we have four discards and like numbers is the category. 
You don't have to pick a hand till you run out of discards. If I had to pick a hand, I think we're closest to the third hand down, the concealed like numbers hand, and we would have to get rid of that tile right there. But we've got no gaps for that hand. If you would have done something different with these tiles, write it in the comment section. Let's go ahead and do another exercise. All right, let's see what we can do with these tiles. Building around multiples, nine, seven. We can either play something consecutive or something with big odds. I'm thinking we could probably give up the four and the one for sure. We really don't have to decide yet. The problem with consecutive run, we're missing eights. So I'm thinking big odds. We could probably get rid of those. I really don't like passing dragons, so I'm gonna hold off on those. Let's go ahead and pass these three. I think that's the best pass you can do. A wind with an even and an odd in two suits. That's a pretty good pass. Very defensive. Okay, so we've got an eight. There's part of our consecutive run opportunity. I think probably we can give up that five at this point. And we have tiles we can pass. Now, these are gonna be a little risky. Five, six, three, two, six, three, two, five, three. Let's go ahead and pass these three. There's a little risk in each one of those. There's another eight, a different suit. Here's a seven. So now we have seven, nine, nine, seven, eight, nine, eight. So we have to make a choice now. We have two tiles we can pass, and then we have dragons. I'm thinking maybe five, seven, seven, nine, or we could do seven, eight, nine with the dragon. That would use all the multiples. And we do have some like number, number potential too. We could use these as joker bait. So either way, I would hold the dragon for like number potential. I think we could go ahead and get rid of the nine. Let's pass those three. If we get an eight bam and flowers, we could maybe play the concealed consecutive hand. That's why I wanna keep that eight. But of course we have a, two gaps, no flowers and no eight man. Let's just see what happens. If you get a joker, just exchange it. So we picked up a flower and a nine man. So we'll keep that. So now we have one discard. So this is when you pick a hand. You don't have to pick a hand till you run out of discards. Just stay at the category level. Don't worry about what hand you're gonna play stay at the category level and just gather tiles. So at this point, we now have to decide. We have seven, nine. I'm thinking seven, eight, nine with the eight in the middle. It's, this is called a knitted hand because the multiples separated by another suit, that's called knitted. So we have bam, dot, bam, dot, or the corresponding dragon anyway. And then we would maybe hold this for joker bait. I'm thinking we could go ahead and pass these three. That's a little bit risky because we have a wind, a dragon that actually correspond for one hand and the eight crack with the red dragon for the big ear hand. That's a little bit of a risky pass, but it's better than passing a um, flower. Okay, so now, ooh, we got something very nice here. Five, seven, seven, nine. I'm thinking that might even be better. We're gonna have to count here and see what we have the most of. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine towards five, seven, seven, nine. That would be the second big odds hand. 
So that's nine tiles. If we played seven, eight, nine with dragons, that's only seven. We have two more tiles towards this. So I think I would, we're on an obligatory pass. We have to pass these tiles here. It's a little risky, but we're, we're actually one away from being set on this hand. We need a seven bam and we're set for this hand, meaning that we could claim discards for every component of the hand. Okay, so we did pick up a five bam, um, and then we have two tiles to pass. I think we could go ahead and still give up that five and be fine. Get rid of the joker. So we have a pair of flowers now five seven seven nine like numbers with flowers i think i would pass one blind for optional cross and just hold all my multiples and see what shakes out if and if nothing else we could switch to like numbers with sevens and use these as joker bait or go ahead and play five seven seven nine and use these as joker bait let's see what we get back discards I mean we could even hold the nine and play one suit five seven nine or even five seven nine with bams I think that we're probably the closest to the five seven seven nine hand second one down that gives us four discards including joker bait with the flowers if you would have done something different with these tiles, write it in the comment section. Let's do one more. Okay, there's our Charleston. Let's see what we can do with this last one. Okay, multiples. We have a pair of flowers and a pair of white dragons. To me, that screams year hand. We do have two jokers also. So I'm thinking uh, two, four, six, eight. So I'm just gonna keep all the two, four, six, eight. Any tile in that category. Don't worry about which one to play, just keep them all. Then look at what you have left to discard. In this case, we have fours and a six. That would mean that we would have to throw away like numbers, and I don't wanna do that. I wanna be defensive with my passing. So I'm gonna whittle this down to try to mix it up a little bit. So I'm thinking probably the two eight with the cracks is the strongest. We could also maybe switch to like numbers with twos, but since the two matches, let's go ahead and give that up. And we could even pass one of each suit here, right here. So we have, for the year hand, primarily these cracks. So let's see what we get. Another flower. That's not gonna help, really, because we only need two flowers. Oh, no, no, there is a hand with four flowers. Okay, let's Let's see what we have here. Like numbers, an eight. Let's give up the one so we can mix this up a little bit and pass these three. Okay, we didn't get any keepers there. And that's not too bad of a pass, but we have like numbers here. Let's give up one of those so that we're left with some good tiles for the next pass. So instead of passing a six, nine east, leaving us with like numbers, let's pass a four, nine east. That would leave us with a four, six and one suit, make that better. So this way now we're passing two suits and we're left with two suits. Think forward to the next pass and keep a defensive eye on your tiles. 
we got an eight. Now, I don't know if that's gonna be helpful yet. We picked up another flower. So now we have four flowers, two, eight, white, and we're, we have a pair now. We're, we did right across left, so we're now going into the second Charleston. Because I do not know what hand I'm playing and we have discards, I'm not going to stop the Charleston. I'm going to keep going. I'm going to break up the four. We need one more tile to pass. The one hand in the year category that uses four flowers is the third one down. We need four twos. So a Kong of twos, a Kong of whites, and then we need a one and an eight in cracks. Therefore, we really don't need that crack, the eight crack. Let's throw that and we'll see what happens. We got, oh, I hope nobody would ever pass that. That is a horrible pass. And we're on an obligatory pass. We have to pass like numbers. Sometimes this happens. Let's see, maybe what we should do, since we have a new multiple here, and it actually coincides or, or corresponds to the dragon, let's switch to like numbers with threes. And that way, maybe we could play the like numbers with threes using six flowers, and we wouldn't have to pass like numbers. Let's pass these three and switch from the year to like numbers using threes. Sometimes when I get like numbers in pairs in a pass, I'll totally switch my hand and leverage them. Let's see what we get. There's another like number situation. Let's see what this looks like. Look at that. Three, four. We would have maybe joker bait if we play pair three, four, white. I think I'd rather play a big, a bigger hand and play like numbers with threes, or we could do three, four, three, four, white. Let's just count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven for a 30 point hand versus one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's one additional tile. Let's just pass two blind. We got one tile to pass, so I would say one. I want one. Now, I don't know who would do that. Sometimes when somebody says they want one tile, I'll say no thank you because that means that they're either in between hands and have no discards, or they're set with a specific hand. So we have a discard. And we're in between two different hands. We have either like numbers with threes, or we have, and that would be, let me see, if we played like numbers with threes and six flowers, that would leave two pair of joker bait totaling five discards. If we played three, four with the matching dragon, we would only have four discards with a pair of flowers for joker bait. So probably this is the stronger option. Even though it's a lower point hand, it's a stronger option. I think what I would do is throw the six bam first and see what happens. But we could actually claim any one of these for Kongs, and we would just need one more tile, any one of them, to get set, meaning that we could claim a discard for each component of that hand. Let me know what you think about those exercises. That was kind of fun. If you have a set at home, get it out and give this a try, and let me know how it goes for you. If you liked the video, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, consider subscribing and click the bell when you do. That way you'll get notification for when I post new videos and you won't miss an opportunity to learn a new strategy or maybe pick up an insight to the game that could give you an advantage at the table. Between now and the next Charleston modeling using National Mahjong League rules, may all your picks be keepers.